Um, what he actually asked was a, was a consideration about uh, when to cease leflunamide, one of the uh, anti-rheumatic agents, uh, one of the DMARDs, in relation to elective orthopedic surgery, in particular joint surgery. Um, so this is a paper from the Journal of uh, Rheumatology International, uh, a paper from 2006, which is interesting, so it's about the most recent and up-to-date uh, paper on leflunamide in orthopedic surgery uh, from the data that I could find, including a number of review articles from 2010 and 11, uh, which featured this article in it. Um, so, uh, these are some of the articles, as I say, that reference this article, um, with really not much more in the way of new information uh, out in that interval that I could uh, come up with. Um, so, for those um, non orthopedics and also in orthopedics who don't deal with much rheumatoid, um, so chronic progressive. Um, disease characterised by uh, a polyarticular synovitis. Um, and routine therapy is that from a rheumatologist's point of view, in terms of non steroidal drugs, steroids, and the new disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. Ah, he wants to see if he can see you. So uh, we are going to go. You don't want to see me, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> What? Are you ready to go? Yeah, no. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Okay. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry for all of you who's got to see you all have to see me in a close up. <laughs> Uh, Adrian, hi, and Nathan here. Um, I'll do my best to wear this thing, but I'm not used to it. Okay. So, as I say, the uh, intervention for rheumatology is heavily medication-based, and certainly in the advent of uh, this day and age, rheumatology drugs certainly tend to delay or at least prevent that crippling type of rheumatoid arthritis which the uh, older population has in the past experienced. Um, so... Um, the medication that we're dealing with all have the, all has the potential for uh, increasing infection rates and compromising wound healing uh, in the post-op period. Uh, certainly something we need to give credence to um, when considering patients who are rheumatoid patients for orthopaedic surgery. Um, the impact, though, on stopping these medications uh, is uh, in, in a number of uh, ways. One is from a pain point of view for the patient. Secondly, from a reduced mobility. Uh, and the impact that that will have on rehabilitation of these patients in the uh, post-operative period. Um, so as far as the use of DMARDs in orthopaedic surgery, there's limited uh, data and a limited number of studies that are regarding this and few evident, true evidence-based guidelines for the cessation or continuation of these medic uh, medications in the perioperative period. Um, so in... in operating on these patients, a significant consideration needs to be given to risk versus benefit uh, in whether we cease these agents. Um, so the most, the, the staple as far as rheumatoid management goes, methotrexate. Um, am I talking loudly or is this okay? It's just weird, weird listening to myself. Okay, um, so methotrexate's one of the, uh, the commonest used DMARDs and it's been around since the 70s. Um, one of the issues with ceasing um, anti rheumatic drugs, but particularly methotrexate, is that issue of flare. Uh, and certainly patients in the peri uh, period, if we were to discontinue within two to four weeks, can certainly have a flare in that time frame. Uh, it's a folate antagonist and certainly interferes with uh, cytokine production and subsequent inflammation. Um, this is one of the landmarks of papers, I should say, as far as methotrexate in orthopedic surgery is concerned. Uh, 2001, there's a paper from Grennan et al. from the uh, Annals of Rheumatic Disease, uh, and it's 388 patients who had rheumatoid arthritis, and they were um, triaged or categorised into three different treatment arms, either methotrexate continuing, um, cessation of methotrexate two weeks prior uh, and for two weeks after, or and those patients with no methotrexate therapy whatsoever. And what they found was actually in the group who continued methotrexate therapy, they had a lower uh, instance of complications and fewer infections and certainly avoided the flares in the post-op period uh, that would delay rehabilitation. So the recommendation was then to continue methotrexate therapy in the perioperative period, um, 
with the caution to either not use them in patients who have existing renal dysfunction or to discontinue them if your patient does actually develop it in the post-op period. Um, and typically with all the immunosuppressive agents as far as uh, risk of immunosuppression. Um, so moving on to leflunomide, which is the one, uh, the issue of note here, and I've just lost everything. No, it's all right, Joe. Keep on going. So Joe? Just, uh, trying to enable Adrian in this webcam. Okay. Okay, so a uh, trade name for leflunomide when it first came out was Arava, um, and this uh, medication interferes with pyr pyrimidine synthesis um, and particularly activated T cells. One of the issues is this medication has a long half-life, uh, and, and a factor of that is it's enterohepatic recycling. So uh, if patients truly need to have uh, uh, this out of their system, there is a, a bioelastic binding resident by the name of cholestyramine, which can be used to uh, cease the uh, enterohepatic cycle of this. Um, one Hi. of the. Uh, <laughs> hey, Adrian. You speak to Adrian, he can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Greetings. Uh, so, there's a paper from uh, 2003 um, by Tanaka et al., um, and they basically looked at the risk of infections only uh, in joint arthroplasty in patients with rheumatoid arthritis who were treated with leflunomide. And uh, interestingly here, these patients were um, treated in two treatment arms. Those that uh, had method, uh, sorry, leflunomide ceased two weeks prior and two weeks post-operative, so a four-week period of no uh, leflunomide versus those who had continuous therapy. And through that period, um, what they found was there was no significant difference in superficial infections. Uh, and in both treatment arms, being only 41 patients to each, uh, there, was only, there were no deep infections in that time frame. And so their, their conclusion from that limited study in small numbers was for a continuation of therapy for leflunomide. Um, so that brings us to this paper and some of the other recommendations that are out in the literature. Um, recommendations from the American Academy uh, I found interesting, which were to continue it for minor procedures, but for the major ones to, con to withhold it one to two days prior, which um, I must admit I found interesting considering the half-life is two weeks. Uh, and their suggestion was to recommence it within one to two weeks once uh, side effects, risk of side effects or interactions, those with either antibiotic therapy or uh, narcotic analgesia were uh, by the wayside. This is from JOS from 2006, and uh, there's no more recent updates from JOS as far as their stance on uh, these DMARDs in that time frame. And as you can see on the leflunomide pour down uh, continuation, hopefully you can see that. Can you see that clearly, Joe? Uh, not Joe, Adrian. Yeah, uh, that looks is, really good. Uh, basically, I said withhold one to two, uh, which is an interesting recommendation for a long half-life drug. Um, so this study, it was 201 patients, uh, 189 of those were rheumatoid patients. The uh, remaining were either psoriatic arthritis patients or uh, juvenile rheumatoid, um, predominantly female with a mean age of around 62. Uh, and the inclusion criteria for this group uh, where they had to have either rheumatoid or psoriatic arthritis and it had therapy that was uh, controlled or sort of at a maintenance dose for more than three months uh, and they could use at least one of these agents. So it wasn't exclusive to an agent in terms of comparing like with like. Um, the patients had to have one of and some of the patients were on three or more uh, and they had to be elective, op uh, elective orthopedic procedures. Um, so the procedures that were routine for the rheumatoid population um, didn't include any rheumatoid surgery, uh, sorry, revision surgery, uh, and all patients had a standard preoperative dose of antibiotics, uh, and the review was for a minimum of six weeks. And really what their endpoint or what they were looking at was that of uh, wound healing complications, either necrotic SR, uh, wound dehiscence or wound complication problems, or infection, both superficial and deep. So this is a smattering, and I'm not sure if it's clear to you all on your conference settings, but a smattering of the cases that were done. Uh, largely arthroplasty, but right through to um, uh, smaller cases for um, removal of material from a wrist and metal removal from a finger. So smaller cases, um, but predominantly uh, joints. Uh, uh, Where's that? 
Yeah, that wasn't uh, expanded. I'm sorry, Ash. I'm not sure what the implications of that is. Uh, and this is this is how they divided up their treatment groups. And as I said, a lot of these patients were on more than uh, one therapy, um, which I thought was an interesting way to compare patients. I would have thought it'd be much uh, more conclusive to actually compare these independent. So we've got patients who are either on methotrexate or methotrexate with corticosteroid, and likewise with leflunamide. We've also got this overlap between methotrexate and leflunamide, and uh, the authors are making conclusions based on methotrexate versus loflunamide in terms of risk, and uh, I just find, found it interesting that they included groups that combined both uh, therapies in the one patient. Um, so the complication rates are listed there, and uh, we'll go through them. Uh, so of the 201 patients, interesting to note that despite all the therapies that these patients were on, 160 of them, so 80, 80 odd percent. Uh, had no wound healing uh, complications, which I think is somewhat reassuring for the rheumatoid population. Um, wound infection was present in nine of those patients, with three being deep. Uh, and this concept of skin necrosis, which I must admit I haven't encountered, uh, was in 12 of the patients. Um, the, naturally, the operation type uh, was a risk factor or was something that complicated the uh, interpretation of uh, complications. Um, I think ankle arthrodesis and foot operations in general are a higher risk for, for complications with wound healing. Uh, and in this study, certainly that came through with an ankle arthrodesis complication rate of around 55%. Uh, and through to joint replacements, uh, total arthroplasty is 16% in total knees and uh, 8 in total hips. Um, so this is the data for the methotrexate population. Um, overall complication rate averaging around 12.9%. But that is including methotrexate with methotrexate and corticosteroids uh, in, that, in that treatment arm. Um, for leflunamide, there was a smaller number of these patients in the population, but again, 57. Uh, 32 are either with a monotherapy or leflunamide with corticosteroid, which they basically classed into one uh, treatment group. This population had 40% uh, complication rate, uh, and then a gross grouping, including those that included methotrexate into their treatment arm, the overall rating came to 36.8. And this uh, statistical significant figure that they've quoted of P.01 uh, is when you compare leflunamide plus or minus corticosteroid with that of uh, methotrexate plus or minus corticosteroid. Um, this is their overall analysis between the two groups. Um, with just those two treatment arms, and the, they stipulated that the maximum peak or the peak corticosteroid dose in this trial was 100 milligrams, um, and then tapered down to a um, maintenance dose that the patient was normally on. Um, overall, comparable in terms of the operations that were performed, um, ankle arthrodesis was a four to three, which were the ones of the higher rate, uh, and, as, and the total joints uh, at the bottom there, small in this group, which I would have been nice to, um, uh, sorry, to see in the larger numbers in terms of comparable work. Um, they also underwent a logistics regression analysis um, to analyse this data, especially with the multi uh, patients with multiple therapies. Uh, and their conclusion was that um, the leflunamide reached statistical significance. Uh, and there's really no comment able to be made on the biological therapies uh, given given the low population numbers in this study. So their overall recommendations was that the use in the perioperative period significantly increases the risk of early healing and infection complications. Uh, and their recommendation would be that to stop leflunamide prior to elective surgery, which is uh, in quite contrast to our last, uh, the first paper in 2003. Uh, I think the confounding factors in this are that there's more than one therapy being involved and the uh, complication rate is certainly influenced by that of the type of the operation performed. Um, the limitations in this paper, and to some point they uh, acknowledge their limitations, is that it's not randomised or uh, any blinding to this trial. Um, there's certainly no long-term follow-up. These are six-week reviews for early wound complications and issues with deep wound infections aren't accounted for in this, uh, in this study. Um, there's also, I think, a need for similar operations between the treatment groups um, to reduce the risk of variation based on operation type. Uh, again, there was no pure corticosteroid group or a control group receiving no treatment, which I think would have added weight. And certainly, as far as making a recommendation for ceasing leflunamide, I think it would have been pertinent to have a treatment group uh, with leflunamide who was ceased preoperatively, uh, much like the first paper. Um, so the conclusions I think I draw from this paper is that 